It's, uh, there's a lot of Spanish uh, influence in the Philippines. Um, I didn't realize this, but once I finally made it 16 hours up to this little village where my grandfather was from, um, in this town of Vigan, they had these empanadas that they loved, and they taught me how to make them with manganisa. And we pretty much did it quite the same way. Yeah. We, we, we pretty much, it was such a great recipe from itself traditionally, so we kind of just like photocopied it. Yeah. But there's a snail dish here, so it's like a, he amped it up with mussels. There's uh, a lot of, um, uh, Tony, you were just on a pig one. There's a lot of roasted pig at all our family reunions. Um, and uh, basically we serve that as well. Yeah, so we have the lechon as a, you know, the traditional way of doing the roasted pig, but we did a different way, which is uh, a little bit of braised and fried up just to get it crispy. This is a Kamaya meal. Um, we do this uh, at Sunda. What's happening here it is something that I never experienced um, because here we just get these uh, banana leaves sent in. There we just rip them off the trees, and they do this to um, actually, you know, just uh, sanitize them and clean them and make them more um, like usable for the, uh, the the table plot. And then we did a 40 foot um, Kamaya meal. Kamaya means hand, uh, before the Spanish came uh, and, and introduced utensils or required utensils. Uh, many people, we just ate with our hands and um, we do a 40 foot table. We actually do it here once a month. Uh, actually we started doing it once a month and it took off and now we did four this month. Um, we had videoed it and all of a sudden it got 5.2 million clicks, views in two weeks. Um, so they all kind of sold out, but we added some more. Um, so I learned a lot of amazing uh, things. This was a kari kari dish. Um, I didn't, sadly and embarrassing, I didn't know that there was a British occupation in the Philippines. Um, this actually came through, uh, you know, sort of too. Yeah, so what we found, what I did research on it is actually, Kare Kare is actually curry, curry, right? So it's an Indian influence when there was British occupation with Indian soldiers, and they were homesick, and they can't get home, so they had their own version of curry, which was made from peanuts. And so it's very same consistency as curry, but um, I know for a fact that Filipinos tend to just take the word and double it up. <laughs> Thank you, Louis Louis. Uh, bon bon. So, um, this I found out, and I didn't know this, but through this dish, I found out it was my Lola's favorite dish to make. And I found out then that she uh, made this dish at a bed and breakfast that she worked at and where she met my grandfather, my Lola, who had gone to law school in Manila, and that's how they met. And he fell in love with her over her party. Got it. I didn't know. Um, other stories you'll see in this thing, it's a little, might be a little rough, but it's a, a goat that uh, when I finally made it up to this village, um, I was presented with a goat. And the uh, village and, and family and friends, although my Lolo is not alive, uh, presented me with a goat. And they taught me how to cook, cook it four ways. Um, and it was amazing. But the most moving part was why it was a goat. Um, they told me this whole story, and I didn't know these things. I think this is what's so amazing about food roots and this idea of you know, all of us being from somewhere. If you go back in time and learn the recipes of your ancestors, you're going to find out a lot more than what's on the plate. You're going to find a lot about um, your, your family's culture, your struggles, their, their timeline, their wants, needs, and desires, and successes and failures. And all sorts of wonderful things that I have come to embrace 